guys here today we're gonna finally do a video that has been requested so many times over the past year and I'm gonna talk to you about 5g stocks and some 5g stocks I own and some 5g stocks that are looking pretty dang attractive okay so 5g is a technology that you guys have probably been hearing a lot about you might have heard something about 5g phones are coming and absolutely they are we do have some 5g phones in the market right now and more are coming into the future and basically devices in the future meaning pretty much within the next year or two you'll start to see mass amounts of devices come out that are 5g enabled versus 4g and the economic impact from 5g is massive okay this is massive this is a game changer 3g to 4g was huge i mean that was a game changer i mean companies like apple like some of the big companies like apple facebook google microsoft all those companies would not be where they're at if it wasn't for the 4g boom Going from 3G to 4G was massive. And then you can think about just a ton of smaller companies that have benefited big time from the move from 3G to 4G. And I think for a lot of you guys that went through that move, I mean, 3G phones were like super slow and it was just like not a great experience. Then all of a sudden 4G comes out and it was like, you know, night and day. And neither say 5G is a whole game changing shift. And the economic impact from 5G is going to be massive. Okay. So in this video here today, I want to get across two points. Okay. One was we're going to talk about four stocks that I think should benefit huge from 5G. Four stocks that should see their revenues go up quite dramatically over the coming years, their profits go up quite dramatically, and their stock prices go up quite dramatically, in my opinion, and how these stocks are going to do that. And I didn't want to just include all stocks I own, so two of these stocks I'm actually invested in that I'm sharing with you here today, and two of these stocks I'm sharing with you here today, I absolutely have no investments in those two companies as of right now. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, smash the thumbs up button if you've been looking forward to a video like this. I hope you guys get a ton of value out of it smashing the thumbs up button that's the way you can pay me and let me know that you enjoyed a video like this all right so with that being said guys let's get into the stock number one of four in my opinion this is a stock that should come to your mind right away if you're thinking about 5g and companies that will benefit huge from 5g those stocks that my goodness they're just going to benefit in a big way qualcomm ticker symbol on this one is q c o m okay qcom good old qualcomm it's a 63 dollar stock here today this is the first one of these four stocks now to just give you some you know base reference around like like how big this company is it's got a 72 billion dollar mark cap on it so a pretty big company but not a gigantic corporation i guess you can say but definitely a very big semiconductor company they benefit a big time from the move to mobile devices p ratio under 18 on the stock big dividend yield on this one about a four percent dividend yield so there's definitely nothing to uh you know brush to the side that is a net, very 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 nice dividend yield on this one obviously if you're looking at the 52 week range is definitely much closer to the 52 week low then the 52 week high obviously we just pretty much had a stock market crash needless to say so that has definitely brought down the valuation of qualcomm along with pretty much every stock out there quite dramatically okay now when it comes to qualcomm their leading technology and intellectual property not just in what they're doing with 4g but 5g as well the the management team believes they have the best products roadmap in the company's history okay and the company's history and i believe this <laughs> that they're they're telling the truth when they say something like that okay now this is not just another handset upgrade and i think that's very important for a lot of folks to understand okay we're talking about a 10x decrease in end-to-end -end latency we're talking about a 100x higher traffic capacity we're not talking about this is just like some old little change all our devices are just going to be a little faster or things are just, no 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 this is massive okay 10x greater experience throughput, 100x greater network efficiency, 3x more spectrum efficiency, 10x increased connection density, okay? So needless to say, this is a massive, massive technological change, and Qualcomm is pretty much the, the front runner in this entire space, and, and if you think about the companies that are going to profit in a massive way, it is Qualcomm, okay? It is a great slide Qualcomm put together here. How does Qualcomm profit from 5G? Well, basically, they're going to get more revenue for device, okay? So they, they sell chips into iPhones, and, well, they haven't recently, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, okay? Okay? But they sell chips into like smartphones and different devices out there, along with pretty much every electronics product you could possibly think of. They sell chips in those. Well, basically, the move from 4G to 5G is going to be more content opportunity, which means a company like Qualcomm can basically make more money from each device they're selling because the, these chips are just going to be more expensive and everything they're doing in these different electronics products are going to be more expensive. That means Qualcomm.
Qualcomm's going to likely make more revenue and profit. They're not going to do that for free, okay? And on top of that, there's a huge opportunity in front of the company to expand into a ton of different industries that the company has, has very rarely participated in, in the past because of the 5G boom. They mentioned automotive as being the first big industry disrupted by this whole 5G boom we're about to go on, okay? Telematics, in-car connectivity, infotainment, ADAS, and they're talking about after that, then we'll see manufacturing, retail, healthcare, energy, logistics, obviously gaming. I mean, gaming is pretty obvious. It's going to benefit huge from the 5G boom because if you think about gaming, especially on mobile devices, there's only so much you can do right now. But if you're talking about 5G, no lag time, things like that, I mean, that's just a, that's a whole different experience there. So needless to say, there's a massive opportunity for the company to expand, not just in current devices in terms of content, but future products as well. Basically, the total addressable market is going from about 65 billion for Qualcomm to about 100 billion, just like a three year span. So that is a huge, huge opportunity in front of the company if you're talking about a total addressable market for somebody like a Qualcomm, okay? Now you see Qualcomm consistently talking about 5G leadership. And when you see things like that, you, you gotta ask yourself, is this just like management gassing themselves up? Or do they Are they really leaders in this space? Are they really leaders? Well, one, Qualcomm has a pretty attractive history History in terms of being leaders technologically and with a lot of their intellectual patents. That's one. But the second thing is that when you when you think about is Qualcomm really a leader in 5G, you gotta look at what's going on in the space. Apple settled all disputes worldwide last year with Qualcomm. Overnight, if you didn't know, Apple and Qualcomm were in legal battles for you know at least a couple of years, needless to say, and they were fighting it out, and this was something Apple wanted to absolutely win against Qualcomm, and basically overnight, because Apple at the end of the day just realized they need Qualcomm to have 5G devices, they said, you know what, we just have to drop all this. We just have to drop all this because it's gonna hurt our business dramatically. We're spending all this money in lawyers and whatnot. And at the end of the day, the 5G boom is getting ready to take off. And if we don't have Qualcomm there by our side, we're not gonna take off with it. It is too big of a risk to Apple's business model for Apple to be in a position where let's say all the other biggest you know, smartphone manufacturers all have a tons of 5G devices out there by let's say you know, 2021 and Apple still doesn't have one out. That's too big of a risk. So Apple just settled all disputes worldwide with Qualcomm, which tells you a lot about what Qualcomm has going on for Apple to just say, you know, lay down and be like, okay, you know what? <laughs> We're gonna settle all this. Qualcomm is going to get at least $4.5 billion from Apple as part of that settlement, okay? A massive, massive amount of money. Not just that, Apple also agreed to a six-year deal with Qualcomm, okay? For Qualcomm to supply Apple chips for mobile devices and associated licensing rights. So this was a massive deal, and this was just kind of the proof in the pudding if you needed to like think, is Qualcomm really that important to 5G? Yeah, when the biggest electronics company in the world, the big dog of them all, right? Apple, when they lay down and they say, you know what, we need you guys? Um, uh, yeah, they probably have some good stuff going on, needless to say, okay? Now, 5G handsets. This is something that's obviously going to take out. 5G handsets, the, you know, I, I don't personally know anybody that owns a 5G handset as of right now. I'm not saying some people don't, but it's a very small number. But I can tell you what, in 2021 and 2022, it's going to go from a very small number to a very big number very quickly. These are the numbers Qualcomm has projected for 5G handsets out there. Uh, I, I, I would bet you within the next year or two, you're going to know a lot of people around you, friends and family that have 5G, either iPhones or 5G smartphones of some kind out there, okay? Now, if we think about Qualcomm, there were some massive things that have been working against Qualcomm. One is the whole Apple deal. Basically, Apple hasn't been a customer of theirs the past year. They've been, you know, or past year or two. They've been fighting in court. All that's cleared up now. It's all in the past. It's all in the past. That, that just got cleared up pretty much overnight last year. And uh, boom, it, it's it's upward and onward there, needless to say. So that got cleared up. Huawei, that was a huge drag on their business this past year. Needless to say, the U.S. government obviously, you know, had blocked Huawei. They were a huge, basically Qualcomm was a huge customer of Huawei. And now that whole deal has been lapped. So needless to say, uh, that's not going to hurt uh, Qualcomm's numbers nearly as bad. And also 4G technology was just kind of played out at this point. I mean, I mean, 4G is just, it's its played out now. There needs to be the next big move and the next big move is 5G. So these are these huge things. These aren't like little small things that were working against Qualcomm. These were massive things. Huawei was like, I think a 10 or 15% customer of Qualcomm. I mean, it was a significant portion of their business. And, and so when you look at all this, 
You're looking at a situation where essentially some massive things just open up for Qualcomm. And if you're thinking about, you know, especially 2021 and beyond, there's some great things likely coming for Qualcomm's business model. And there's a great probability they're going to grow revenues, profits, and their stock price massively over the next few years. Now, if we go ahead and look at balance sheet, you know, I know a lot of people haven't cared about balance sheet in the past until basically the last month or two when all of a sudden this whole uh, Roni situation started, right? All of a sudden now everybody cares about balance sheet. So let's definitely look at the balance sheet. So Qualcomm has over $11 billion sitting around in cash, another $314 million in short-term investments. Now they do have over $13 billion in debt, almost $13.5 billion. So I would give Qualcomm an okay balance sheet. It's certainly not my favorite balance sheet in the world, but it's certainly not the worst balance sheet or anywhere remotely close to the worst balance sheet. They do have a lot of cash around, but they do have a significant debt portion as well, okay? So I would give them like an okay balance sheet. Now, the only thing I kind of don't like about Qualcomm is they've spent $26 billion over the past three years or so on stock repurchases, $26 billion. I think that $26 billion, in my personal opinion, would have been much better served either buying some other companies that could significantly expand their business or maybe using that money just to keep on the balance sheet or pay down that debt and then still keep another, I mean, they could have paid a 13 billion in that, that $13 billion in debt down, then put the other 13 in cash and been in a cash position right now of let's say 24 billion roughly, somewhere around there and no debt on the balance sheet. That would be extremely, extremely attractive, but they obviously haven't done that. So if there's one thing I would kind of ding the management team for, it's all those stock repurchases. I just think uh, a lot of that money ended up being wasted money in my personal opinion, especially the fact that the stock was generally a lot higher price than what it is today in terms of all those shares they were buying back in mass. So, um, you know, that that's the one thing I'm just kind of like, I don't know about that, man. I think that was a lot of uh, <laughs> wasted money in the end there. But at the end of the day, when it comes to Qualcomm stock, is this a stock I think can 2x plus over the next five years? I would say absolutely. Uh, I would be shocked if Qualcomm is in at least 120 plus dollar stock in five years from now. I would be absolutely shocked. I absolutely expect Qualcomm to be a stock that at least 2x's if not more than 2x's over the course of the next five years when I look at all they have coming in 5g and the way that technology is going to take off over the next few years so um, absolutely love Qualcomm it's a definitely a stock I'm watching right now and uh, other than just a you know a stocks to watch type stock I'm, I'm thinking about possibly buying this one very very soon needless to say especially if it goes back under 60 okay now stock number two this stock should come to your mind as soon as you think of 5g and it's Apple, okay? Apple is a direct beneficiary of what will happen in 5G technology. And this one is not complicated at all. This is no Qualcomm where it's like, okay, they got these different, no, this one's a very, very simple one. That's why this one's stock number two of four of stocks that will benefit huge from 5G and stocks I love for the 5G wave, okay? Real quick on Apple, let's just go over some base numbers, about a $1.1 trillion market cap, absolutely massive company, obviously. Uh, P ratio on this one, 19 and a half. A dividend yield of about one point. To five on Apple stock, uh, another stock. I mean, Apple's kind of in the, the mid range of its 52 week range right now. I guess it's a little closer to the bottom side, but it's not that far. But, but Apple's real simple. At the end of the day, the 5G iPhones are going to be more expensive than the 4G iPhones. So which means Apple's going to make more money on their bottom line and their top line from 5G phones. That's just what Apple does. I mean, every single time Apple figure out, figures out a way to make a little more money, needless to say, on uh, iPhones. And so when, when 5G iPhones come out, the price is going to go up. People will be willing to pay more because they'll experience the product and they'll realize, holy smokes, this is like, I mean, literally, it's like uh, 4G is going to seem like it's just total junk once you've experienced 5G. So people will start demanding 5G iPhones and 5G iPhones will start selling. Apple will make money, more money from those. It's, it's pretty dang simple. And this is the biggest change for iPhones Honestly, probably since iPhone 6, which came out in September 2014. I mean, I don't think you can make an argument that anything has been a bigger game changer uh, since iPhone 6, honestly. I, like 5G is a big game changer for Apple and for iPhone sales, needless to say. iPhone 6 was a big product because it was a bigger product. A lot of people have been you know, demanding Apple to make a bigger iPhone. They had it for years. And a lot of people actually switched over to Samsung during that time, if you remember back in, in 2012, 2013, into 2014, because they wanted a bigger uh, smartphone experience. And a lot of people ended up switching to Samsung or started getting Samsungs as their first smartphones if they were just starting to upgrade. Apple finally, with the iPhone 6, came out with a bigger iPhone and sales 
sales went crazy. It was a super cycle. And uh, needless to say, since that bigger iPhone, this is the biggest change because you know 5G iPhone will be huge. Now, it won't just be iPhone. Keep in mind iPads, for instance. A lot of people use iPads that have wireless technology, so needless to say, those will change from 4G to 5G as well. And a lot of people will probably upgrade those uh, for a lot of people that you know love to have that connection to the networks and whatnot. There will end up being 5G uh, Apple Watches. <laughs> you know, obviously, a 5G Apple Watch will be a device that will end up selling very, very well in the market. And, and heck, there would be absolutely no reason, absolutely no reason to create a 5G AirPod. But you know what? I think Apple should just, you know, call one of their next AirPods like 5G AirPods because I could tell you what, I, I, you know, I think some people would just want to flex on the other AirPod users that they got the 5G AirPods. But needless to say, like Apple should benefit huge from this. If we go ahead and look at Apple's balance sheet, my goodness, you're not going to find a bigger, you know, a, 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 a bigger balance sheet than in this one 39 almost 40 billion in cash another 67 billion in short-term investments 100 billion dollars in equity and other investments and 93 billion in debt they do so they do have debt it is quite a bit of debt 93 billion and for any other company basically in the world 93 billion dollars in debt would be ridiculous and it'd be like holy smokes can you believe they got 93 but for apple they could literally pay that off in in, in a few seconds and still have 100 billion plus just laying around which is incredible it just speaks volumes to literally how big Apple's business is. Now, is Apple a type of 5G stock that I can see 2Xing over the next five years or so? No, I'll be honest. I, I don't really see it getting to a place where it's a $2.2 trillion company. I don't really see it getting, uh, at least in the next five years, I don't really see this stock going to $500 in the next two years, to be honest. Do I think Apple stock will appreciate in the next two, in the ne over the next five years? Absolutely. But do I think this is a, as, as, as easy of a money in terms of like a 2 X plus in the next five years, let's say a Qualcomm is. In my personal opinion, I don't. Okay, I think the stock has run a lot recently. I think the valuation has come up quite a bit. I think it has priced in some of the of the benefit it'll get from 5G over the next year or two. But absolutely, I mean, Apple's definitely a stock I can definitely see appreciating over the next you know five years. I just don't think it's going to be one of those that doubles up or more than doubles up within, over the next five years, in my personal opinion. So Apple, you know, honestly, a huge company is going to benefit from 5G. No question about it. Okay, stock number three of four is a stock I personally own. This one's called Skyworks Solutions. Take care of someone. This one is SW. KS. This is an $85 stock here today when it comes to Skywork Solutions. You want to see a, a ridiculous balance sheet. You want to see the cleanest, nicest, prettiest, the sexiest balance sheet you'll ever see in your life. Look at Skywork Solutions, okay? $928 million in cash, another $262 million in short-term investments. Keep in mind, Skywork's in some huge company or something like that, so these numbers are pretty dang big. Another $38 million in equity and other investments, and no debt, okay? No debt. You want to see the ultimate balance sheet? Look no further than Skywork Solutions. That's just one reason why I absolutely love owning this stock and why it's one of my probably top three or top four biggest investments in the entire stock market. Like the balance sheet is ridiculous. I mean, absolutely ridiculous on this stock, right? Market capitalization for Skyworks is $14.5 billion, which is right in my sweet spot. If you track any of my investments, you know the majority of my investments, generally speaking, are between that that $1 billion and like $20 billion type market cap. So it's right in kind of my sweet spot, $14.5 billion market cap on this one. P ratio of under 18, dividend yield of over two on this particular company with a very, very low payout ratio. And when it comes to Skyworks Solutions, this is a company that has almost everybody as a customer of theirs. I mean, name, name the biggest tech companies in the world. They're all customers of Skyworks Solutions. They are. I mean, I had to draw an Apple there because Apple doesn't like anybody to, to put their names in. But uh, by the way, Skyworks Solutions gets about 40% of their business from Apple. So that's actually the biggest customer. They're just not allowed to publicly like recognize that. It has to be in just uh, like down low reports and whatnot. Uh, but I mean, literally, like, 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 like think about it. Apple, Google, Amazon. Tesla, Nokia, Samsung, Toyota. I mean, all the biggest dogs out there that you could possibly want as one of your customers. They are the customers of, of, of Skyworks Solutions. So it's absolutely amazing, okay? And uh, to uh, better explain kind of 5G technology here, if a lot of you guys aren't understanding, you know, uh, in the past, it's been about connecting us to a device, connecting us to our phone, connecting us to our headphones or something like that. In, in the future, with 5G devices, everything's gonna be connected. So it's connecting devices to other devices, which is a huge, 
huge trillion dollar plus opportunity for just the economy and just you know all these companies in general. Content is exploding for Skyworks Solutions when it comes to these 5G devices. There's just so much more content for somebody like a Skyworks Solutions to go after and they're just going to end up making so much more money from 5G for everything they're selling into 5G than versus 4G anything. Okay, This, this slide shows you exactly the, the, the real excitement I have for a stock like this. Okay, So if you go back to 2G, the, the front end of a value for somebody like a Skyworks Solutions to go after was maybe like three bucks. Then you go to 3G and the, the opportunity is quite a bit bigger. Also now it's like $8 of opportunity. You go to 4G and it's like, okay, now we're really talking. Now it's like $18 of, of opportunity there. But with 5G, we're talking about $25 of opportunity for a company like Skyworks Solutions to go after. So we're talking about there's significantly more content for, for somebody like a Skyworks Solutions to go after when it comes to a 5G device versus 4G devices. And, and that number could possibly end up growing over time as these devices continue to get more and more complicated, which will happen. But the other opportunities are huge. The connected car, we, we heard a little bit about that when we talked about Qualcomm, right? Skyworks Solutions, Huge opportunity, 73% of cars will ship with cellular connectivity by 2024 it is estimated, okay? It's not that long into the future, it's just a few years from now, right? So, uh, like literally three quarters of cars will ship with cellular connectivity just a few years from now. That's a huge difference from, uh, you know, basically now or in past years where it was, it was, you know, a very, very small percentage to like zero, that's a huge, huge, massive change. There's $50 of RF content which RF, by the way, stands for radio frequency, okay? $50 of RF content expected in each autonomous vehicle. That's a massive opportunity, okay? A massive opportunity. It's not like we're talking just, oh, it's a couple of chips. No, we're talking about a lot of money up for grabs there, all right? In terms of Skyward Solutions, they're not just benefiting from end devices like, like let's say, the iPhones in the future and different smartphones that will have 5G and cars with 5G. No, also the whole infrastructure build out, which is still gonna take years to fully build out this infrastructure. They've started building this out over the past couple of years, but it's it's they need a lot more devices and a lot more places, needless to say, for the connections when it comes to 5G. And Skyworks is benefiting from the infrastructure build out as well. So think of it not just as, as a play on, you know, all these devices getting out there and autonomous vehicles and all those sorts of things, but also think about it from the standpoint of infrastructure opportunity. The a total addressable market for a company like Skyworks Solutions is growing massively. It's going from just, you know, kind of smartphones, tablets, things like that to the internet of things, to obviously automotive, to emerging industries. When you think about 5G factory, of the future, when you think about artificial intelligence, when you think about a sector like healthcare that needs to change in a massive way and needs a, needs a lot more connectivity in the hospitals and things like that, that's a huge opportunity for somebody like a Skyworks Solutions. Now, when it comes to our management team, I always love to kind of, you know, grade a management team and executive team, how a company's doing basically off of a five or 10 year basis usually. That's usually the best way to do it. And if you look at something like Skyworks Solutions, you buy one share of this company back, you know, basically exactly 10 years ago. So I think I'm recording this video here today on March 25th. Let's say we go back in time 10 years ago, right? And we buy our one share of Skyworks Solutions. We get a 422% return on our investment, okay? 422% return. You don't just magically get a 422% return over, over a 10 year span. You did that because you got a company that is doing some amazing things and you got an executive team in place that is, that is you know, clicking on all cylinders. That's how you get a company like this to get a 422% return versus something like the S&P 500, which is a little over 100% return, okay? The S&P 500 is a little over 100% return, which is certainly, you know, nothing to laugh at, you know, good for you, S&P 500, but, you know, 422% return, a little more attractive in a stock like Skyworks Solutions. Uh, I believe in this management team a lot. They, they've always executed. I don't think, uh, I don't have any doubts about their ability to execute into the future. Now, do I think Skyward Solutions is a stock that can 2X plus over the next five years? Absolutely, absolutely. I believe Skyward Solutions will be at least a 2X plus stock over the next five years, which, you know, from $85, it would have to get to 170 plus over the next five years. I absolutely believe that is very much a possibility. The, the revenues, their net income, 
I mean, they, they should all double up at least, at least over the next you know, five years, needless to say. And uh, with a balance sheet in place like it is, when we got a management team there, like this management team is, and the employee force that is doing some amazing things, not just in the past, but uh, what they're doing in 5G, uh, needless to say, I think Skyward Solutions is going to uh, be a stock that makes me a lot of money over the next five years. And that's why it's one of my top five biggest investments. And I think they're going to, you know, have a huge boom from 5G. And on to the last one, okay? Last but not least, this is what, what I call the sleeping giant one, okay? This is a sleeping giant one. This is the one in which of these 5G stocks that no one is talking about as a 5G play. And it's because they're not selling chips into any players or anything like that. And no one even really talks about this one as like a 5G opportunity. But this, this stock is the sleeping giant in my opinion. This stock will benefit massively from 5G. And I'm talking about one of the biggest beneficiaries of, in the world of 5G. And, and it's one of those that's just outside the box that not a lot of people are even, are even thinking about. And I think if you're not thinking about this one as a 5G play, I think it's a big mistake, okay? And that is good old Tesla, my Tesla stock, all right? How is Tesla going to benefit huge from 5G? Well, I can tell you Tesla is absolutely a huge beneficiary of 5G, okay? Absolutely huge. So if you think about what, uh, what Tesla has in the market right now with their autopilot platform, an amazing platform. I own two Teslas. I own a Model X and I own a Model 3, okay? And I can tell you the autopilot feature in both of those is pretty dang cool. It can do about, let me say about 90% of the driving for me. And if I'm going on a, a 30 minute drive somewhere, it can do, you know, 25 minutes, if not more than 25 minutes of the driving. It does a pretty dang good job on autopilot. I will say that. It's it's more the, the very specific things I need to do. Maybe make turns. Maybe there's a stop sign there, stop light, things like that. I have to actually control those. But the autopilot feature is amazing. And they're doing a lot further things that like full self-driving capabilities. And, and they're talking about even this year, they're going to launch basically basically, where it can recognize traffic lights and stop signs, automatic driving on city streets. That is amazing, okay? That is all coming. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we look at somebody like, like Kathy Wood over there at Ark Invest, she's a huge Tesla bull. They're a huge investor in Tesla stock, right? If, if you look at somebody like her, she's got a $15,000 price target on the stock by 2024, you know, or in 2024, let's put it that way, okay? Uh, I think that number's a little crazy, I'll be honest. I, I mean, I know uh, even our like, more bearish cases, like $7,000, even that's a little crazy in my opinion, okay? But needless to say, she has this huge price target. Why does she have this huge price target? And, and why is another reason that I'm super bullish on Tesla stock? Well, it's the autonomous vehicle opportunity, and it's the autonomous taxi networks. We should see autonomous taxi networks launch over the next you know, several years. And one of those players that has a huge opportunity in this space when it comes to autonomous taxi networks is Tesla. I, I can see a, a few different companies competing there. I think Tesla and Uber have the biggest opportunities there because of, of obviously Uber's brand name. They're working on a lot. And Tesla has a great brand name and they're working on some things that are you know, really exciting as well with all the mileage with Tesla is calculating all the, all the things that the artificial intelligence program is seeing the mistakes the cars make in autopilot mode, things like that. So need to say, autonomous taxi networks, massive opportunity for Tesla. This is one of the biggest uh, opportunities for Tesla, other than obviously just selling mass amounts of electric vehicles over the coming years and getting to a place where they can produce 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million electric vehicles a year. Other than that, autonomous taxi networks is the next biggest opportunity, in my opinion, for Tesla. And, and so if you think about uh, how fast do things need to react, they need to react instantaneously. There can be no lag time. There can be no 4G like, like spinning wheel, okay? Things need to happen fast. The kid runs in the street, right? It, it, you know, it, that car needs to stop immediately. And it actually needs to kind of foresee that before it even happens, okay? And by the way, in this picture, like, do these people not like that kid or, or like what is going on? Like, like no one was like, oh, let me run out there and maybe try to save the kid or, or something like that. No, let's just uh, put our hands over it. Do they not like him? Like, like I'm kind of offended by just looking at that photo. I really don't think they like him, okay? But if you think about driving down a, a busy highway, right? Uh, everybody's going 50, 60, 70 miles per hour. And then you got some guy going 90 miles per hour in the fast lane, right? And you got some, you know, great grandma over there in the slow lane driving 45. Everybody's going different speeds. Everybody's cutting in and out of lanes. It's craziness, right? It's absolute craziness. Well, when, when 5G technology takes off and, and these cars are on the 5G network, 
they're going to all be able to talk to each other. And this car is going to be able to talk to the other car, essentially, and say, I'm changing lanes over here. And the other car knows that before that, that move is even made. The, this car says, I'm slowing down because of X, Y, Z reason. And this other car knows that. And, and so if we're thinking about an autonomous, a true fully autonomous taxi network and, and a network of cars over the next, you know, let's say five or 10 years that start to get built out in which the cars are able to talk to each other and, and make, and make you know, judgments way faster than a human could, 5G technology is something that absolutely is going to help enable that in a massive, massive way. These cars need to be able to talk to each other and know exactly what they are doing before they even do it. I think this is huge. And if we think about it, right, if we just, if we just look at some statistics, right, traffic deaths in the USA have exceeded 40,000 for three straight years. That's deaths, okay? Never mind how many people get severely injured. So if you think about that, I mean, this is this is something that's not even talked about. We don't even blink our eyes to this. I mean, we don't. Even, no one even talks about like the amount of, of fatalities that happen on highways across the world each day, in roads across the world each day. No one pays attention to this, and it's ridiculous. And so if we think about how are we going to do this, it's clearly not making human drivers better because human drivers just suck, okay? They, you know, we're just not built to drive, you know, big metal things around 75 miles per hour because people do crazy stuff, things happen, and accidents end up happening. We need autonomous taxi networks if we're going to get this number down significantly. We need autonomous taxi networks. We need autonomous networks in general for vehicles to be able to talk to each other. I mean, the, the Roni situation... This is something that's killed 913 Americans, and we've shut down the entire country for this. We shut down the entire country, and it might end up you know, killing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, but we shut down the entire country for this. Keep in mind, every single year, tens of thousands of Americans are killed on roads, and people don't even blink an eye to this. This is something that has to change. This has to change and it will change, and I think Tesla is going to be one of the companies that really pushes this forward. And another reason why I'm rooting for Tesla to succeed over time, okay? Now, if we look at Tesla, is this a stock that should 2x plus over the next five years? In my opinion, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it's certainly possible it could not, but I just don't foresee it. I, I mean, it, never mind just an autonomous taxi network and, and, you know, how 5G is going to help enable that, but you think about, obviously, electric vehicles in general, the dominant player there. You think about their energy business. I mean, needless to say that they're just a dominant company that should get a lot more dominant so i hope you guys really enjoyed this video as always obviously when it comes to 5g stocks and start talking about stocks to buy or stocks to watch and whatnot there's a ton of stocks we could have gone into there are a lot of companies that are going to try to compete in 5g i just wanted to mention the four stocks that kind of come to my mind when i think about actual investments i have or companies that i might invest in very soon that should likely see huge booms in their businesses because of 5g technology but let me know if there's any other better 5g stocks down there in that comment section i would love to hear from you guys as always if you have some secret stock that i don't know about that maybe that's the one that's going to triple up quadruple up 5x their business because of the 5g boom i would love to hear from you guys as always smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video thank you for watching have a great day